After the events of Order 66 and the near-complete destruction of the Jedi Order, the few survivors that day scattered across the galaxy trying to hide themselves and their Force powers from everyone to prevent themselves from being executed by Darth Vader and the Inquisitors. Unfortunately, one of these surviving Jedi was tracked down by Darth Vader, but he was one of the greatest Jedi fighters of all time and was known for only one thing inside the Order, his ability to kill. This was not going to be an easy task for Darth Vader. So let's break down the story of how one of the toughest Jedi almost killed Darth Vader after Order 66. The story begins after Darth Vader manages to track down a Jedi Knight named Kirak Infilla, who is deep in hiding after the Jedi's darkest day. The reason he is hunting this Jedi is because he needs a new lightsaber after losing his to Obi-Wan on Mustafar. After managing to track down the Master, Vader's droid informs him that although he has not been active in Jedi affairs for many years, even when he was, he was not the type of guy to take part in diplomacy, training or research. He had precisely one purpose within the Jedi Order, and that was to fight. Stationed out on the river moon of Al-Dalim, Kirak Infilla is floating in the air with the Force, meditating on his teachings and conjuring up the strength he needs to survive. As part of this training, he has a group of attack droids ready to fight him, so he can train his defenses and remain sharp for the coming years of hiding. The Solemn Master continues fighting his training droid named Rx, while assembling four Padawan's traps at once, something that the droid doesn't believe his master should be doing because he instead should be hiding his Jedi abilities. Infilla, however, tells him that the easy path rarely leads to a worthwhile destination. The droid, in response, snaps back and suggests that his philosophy is overly simplistic, before telling him that at least the easy path would allow him to exist. Infilla, however, tells him that he is a Jedi, and pretending otherwise would not be easy at all. And that's a theme that we're seeing pretty often now, especially with the Obi-Wan Kenobi trailer saying that a Jedi cannot hide who he is. While this is going on, Vader and his droid are closing in on their tug, and they quickly slam through one of Kirak Infilla's traps, causing the Dark Lord to crash down onto the rocky surface below. The droid stays behind to continue repairs, and suggests that Vader should wait before confronting the fearsome Jedi atop the hill, but Vader tells him that he can sense Kirak waiting for him. He does not want to disappoint his Jedi enemy. Travelling through the nearby sprawling canyon, Vader is very soon met by the Jedi, who is standing on the high ground above him. As Vader walks closer, Infilla can sense the horrifying aura of darkness surrounding Darth Vader, and angrily asks, Was it you? Before the Jedi Master can ask any more questions, however, Vader reaches his cybernetic arm out and begins force-choking him with tremendous strength, causing great pain to the Master. Vader, however, is soon shocked as Kirak Infilla overpowers him and manages to push him back with the Force. Infilla then says that he will not be defeated by a dark creature such as Vader. Infilla reveals that he was not with the Jedi on that day of Order 66 as he was participating in a Barash vow, which is a Jedi tradition where one would disconnect themselves from the Order and all of its activities completely, not making contact with them until the end of the vow. Infilla, however, could feel the death of almost every Jedi on the day of Order 66, and senses that same darkness now, demanding to know if Vader was behind it. Vader then coldly answers, Yes. After hearing this, Infilla demands to know if Vader is here to kill him also, which Vader gives him a very sharp, Yes. Unexpectedly, however, Infilla breaks out into a maniacal laughter, declaring the end of his Barash vow, before demanding that Vader climb to the top of the nearby mountain. He explains that the mountain is named Parsval and is a sacred Jedi testing ground, with those who climb it being challenged by the Force, and the higher they get, the harder the challenge becomes. With Vader being a former Jedi himself, this should be especially tough for him. He then shouts out to Vader, telling the Dark Lord that he will await him on the highest ground possible. And the way this guy's talking, you'd think he's seen Revenge of the Sith. Following this, Infilla immediately orders his droid Rx to open the floodgates, hoping to rain down a torrent of fast-moving water on Vader. The plan works, and Vader is quickly swept away from the rushing water, but he is soon able to recover and use the Force to keep the water away from him. As Vader begins his climb up the Sacred Mountain, his challenge begins, and he immediately grabs a massive eagle-like creature by the neck before slamming it into a nearby rock face with pure rage and anger. More of the creatures swarm the Sith Lord, but they are no match for him. Watching Vader complete these challenges, Rx asks his master if he should blow the bridge to make it even more difficult for him to pass, but instead of giving an answer, the Jedi Master tells his droid that he can feel the cold darkness of Vader down in the canyon, the exact same feeling that he felt during Order 66. He then asks his droid what he thinks Vader is. Is he a Sith? Is he a monster? Trawling through his databanks, Rx tells his master that he doesn't believe that Darth Vader is a Sith because he hasn't seen a red-bladed lightsaber yet, but he certainly does see the traits of a dark side user. And at this point, Vader hasn't actually obtained his first red lightsaber after losing his blue one to Obi-Wan on Mustafar. Soon after, Vader passes the first challenge and moves on to the spike wind part of the climb, but Infilla does not want him to face the traps. Instead, he comes out to face Darth Vader and ignites his green blade, ready to strike. He taunts Vader by sarcastically telling him that he's doing a great job and he's almost at the top, but Vader doesn't take this well at all, and instead slams him away with the force into the nearby rock wall. Having seen this, Rx ignites his electroblade and bravely shouts out to Infilla not to fear, as he will destroy the mechanical man. 
Rx charges at the Dark Lord, telling him that he has served the Jedi on this mountain for generations and that the Dark Side will never win. But before he can even finish his sentence, Vader tears his arm from his body and tosses the droid off of the cliff with ease. Darth Vader also takes his weapon, giving him the ability to duel to the death. Before even taking a swing, Kirek and Phyllis senses that Vader is not only here to kill him, but also to take something. He knows that Vader wants his lightsaber. The two then lock blades and furiously crash, ducking and weaving between each other's swings. As the showdown gets more and more intense, Vader's leg snaps, leaving him on the edge of defeat with Kirak clearly holding all of the cards. Before dealing a final blow, Kirak realizes that Vader could not have wiped out the whole Jedi Order on his own, knowing that there must be a master. He then brutally force pushes the one-legged Vader off of the cliff, as he shouts out that once he kills him, he will seek out and destroy the master. This leaves Vader badly injured and gasping for air through his suit. This is the closest Vader has come to death since Mustafar. The horribly injured Vader then groans in pain, suffering even more than he already did inside of the metal suit. Despite being in immense pain, Vader managed to gather the strength to track down the Jedi Master and hopes to put an end to him for good. At this point, the Jedi Master has escaped into Ambalar City, which is protected only by a nearby dam. Inside the city, he asks the local Thalothian mechanic who he left his ship with when he started the Barash Vow to prepare it as he needs it immediately. While this is happening, Vader is clutching at his torn off leg and eventually gathers the immense strength required to reattach it before standing and beginning his journey into Ambalar City to hunt down the Master. And if you pay very close attention, you'll actually notice that this is the leg from the droid RX. Pretty cool that Vader has now just taken his leg. While helping to prepare his own ship, Kirak senses that terrifying darkness once again. He immediately feels a rush of adrenaline and runs outside where he very quickly sees Darth Vader standing atop the dam. This time, Vader is filled with far more rage and anger than ever before, demanding that the Master come out to face him. Kirak and Filler really has no choice at this point and immediately ignites his emerald green blade, vowing to end this darkness once and for all. The two then ferociously return to their fight, clashing blades and swinging with all of their power. They are very quickly interrupted however after a barrage of blaster bolts comes their way, seemingly from nowhere. As the two force users turn their heads, they notice the local security force has fired warning shots at them, warning them to cease their fight immediately. Vader, however, has no care or respect for them whatsoever, immediately using the Force to toss the lowly guards off of the dam. Kirak and Villa is horrified by this action, rapidly extending his arm with the Force to hold the guards in the air, preventing their immediate deaths. This absolutely infuriates Vader to a level he hasn't felt since that fight on Mustafar. Taking things even further, Vader begins Force crushing all of the water containment units in the city, sending Kirak and Villa into a deep, deep panic. As the containers start to burst, Infilla desperately tries to stop them, but Vader simply calls him a fool. Stealing his lightsaber the moment Infilla focuses on stopping the water from flooding the city. After taking his green blade, Vader then lifts the Jedi Master up into the air high above the city, brutally force choking him. Infilla begs Vader to kill him, but spare the city from flooding, but to no avail. Vader continues crushing the containment units, horribly flooding every single building in the city, all while forcing Kirak to watch. In his final act of darkness, Vader tosses Kirak's dying body forcefully into the floodwaters, immediately killing him on impact, along with killing everyone in the city thanks to the flooding. This is Vader's first major mission since Mustafar, and he has killed thousands, all to gain his first lightsaber as a Sith. So that is the Jedi who almost killed Darth Vader. Thanks so much for watching, really hope you enjoyed the video, make sure you smash that like button down below if you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.